Yeah. Next up, we're going to have our last short talk of the day. Kristen Lundgren is going to talk to us about how you can make antennas. Can pretty antennas be practical? Um, thank you, Kristen. Thank you. All right. Um, so I'm going to, my, uh, my talk is about designing cute formal antennas. So I'm first going to start by saying where I came up with that term. In, uh, in other fields, the term conformal means conformal optics or conformal antennas is an, an optic or an antenna that conforms to another, um, another function. For example, in aerodynamics, an airplane windshield would be a conformal optic because it has to first conform to keeping the airplane up in the air to the aerodynamic properties of the machine before also having the optical properties that the pilot can see out of it. So cute formal antennas conform to the purpose of being cute. And why not? So it's so a little background. I started using open source software probably in the early 2000s, sort of seriously when I was in graduate school. I used uh, started with Star Office back in Solaris. And some years later, I, I learned about open hardware and was really intrigued by the concept. And I did, I did a little bit of Arduino. I've done some, some little LED projects, but despite a background in electrical engineering, I'm, I'm really not a circuit designer. So I've kind of just been on the fringes of the open hardware community, but not really, not really contributing very much until, uh, until recently, this, this fall, this winter, I was exploring a, a software uh, modeling tool for computational electromagnetics called MEEP that I had used uh, back from my graduate work. And it now has a, a pretty newish uh, Python interface. Back, back when I used it, it was only Scheme, which is a Lisp family of languages, very different. So I was exploring it and I started wondering what else I could do with it besides the, uh, the solar cell modeling I had done back then. And I started thinking antennas, why not antennas? This, this is a, an electromagnetic phenomena, an electromagnetic function. So I started uh, playing with that idea and I, I decided to, to see where I could go with that. And so unfortunately, uh, life has been interfering with my fun making hobbies. So this talk is going to be more of a process talk than a results talk. So let me uh, share my screen with you. Uh, come on, we're working on it. There we go, entire screen share. That should pop up in a second. Are we? Are you seeing my screen? Let's let's hope so. <laughs> so here we go. So pretty antennas. Okay, there we are. Perfect. Just popped up on YouTube. Okay, so first I'm going to, to give a little bit of background about the ISM frequency band. Industrial, scientific, and medical is what ISM stands for. And it is an unlicensed band. Um, unlike, say, 90.5 megahertz, the, the FCC would have uh, something to say if you started broadcasting a, a pirate radio station. But, but this, these bands, there are, there are multiple frequency bands world, worldwide. Some of them are common across most countries or all countries, and some are country specific. And the ISM bands include the band I'm going to talk about, 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz, which is where Wi-Fi is, which is where Bluetooth is. Your, uh, your microwave oven actually works on that frequency. And other frequency bands cover RFID, things like garage door openers, other remotes, radio astronomy, medical devices. So these are things that you can use without having to get a license from the FCC or your local equivalent. So if you're going to design a cute antenna, where are you going to start? First, you need to figure out what your application is. If it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, then you know your frequency range is going to be 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. So you would say pick a center frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. Because in electromagnetics, the frequency directly informs the size of your geometry. You have to know what your frequency is or what your wavelength is to know how big you need to make your thing. 
So first you would start off with just a standard antenna, a nice little square microstrip antenna, which is also called a patch antenna. It looks like a little patch. So you start with that and figure out kind of what size you would make that. So for the patch size, you want it to be a half a wavelength. So I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of math, figure out what my wavelength is. I've got the speed of light equals frequency times wavelength. Three times 10 to the eighth equals 2.45 times 10 to the ninth. That gives you a lambda of about 12 and a quarter centimeters. So, so you've got your wavelength. This is the wavelength of your, your Wi-Fi, your router, if you have a, a regular Wi-Fi, not, not your 5G, that's a different frequency. And so half a wavelength, the size of your patch is gonna be about six centimeters. So you start with that information. And then you figure out, how am I gonna feed this antenna? I need to get some energy from, from something, from my router, say, to this antenna. So you're gonna use a little microstrip line. I'm gonna flip back two slides. There's the microstrip transmission line, the, the skinny, skinny waveguide. I'll wait for that to show up for a sec. So you wanna figure out what size you want that to be. Okay, there it is. Flipping back and the size depends on what material your substrate or your, your circuit board is made out of, it's dielectric constant, and the thickness of the material. And frequency is, is sort of folded in there because the dielectric constant of the material depends on frequency. So you're gonna go to your board house, whether that's Osh Park or someone else, figure out what material they're using and look at the data sheet. It'll tell you what the dielectric constant is. And you use that. In almost all cases, your impedance you want is 50 ohms. That's a very, very standard in almost everything except I think cable. I think cable uses 75 still. I could be wrong. And there's microstrip calculators online. Um, you just pop in your, your dielectric constant and your, your thickness and your, and your impedance that's desired and it'll tell you exactly what to do. For this, it's about two millimeters. That's a pretty good size. So I'm gonna talk about the workflow I've been, I've been working with and this is all open source software. So to get started, we've already done the first thing. We've picked our frequency. We found the, the size that we're gonna use for our patch antenna and our microstrip. Then we're gonna figure out what cute antenna shape we want to draw. We're gonna draw that up in FreeCAD. There's a lot of exporting and importing to get between uh, different softwares, because of course everything works in a, a different format natively. So we export that as DXF, open that in another software, K layout, which is more designed for uh, two dimensional circuits. And, and you can have multiple layers in K layout. And you export that as GDS2, open MEEP, the electromagnetic simulation tool I mentioned earlier, and import the GDS2 file into there. You can simulate the electric fields and you can look at images to figure out what the electric fields are doing, what the reflection is. You can view those results in 3D in Paraview. You can also ex export them as PNGs and make some, some animated GIFs, iterate through this process. And then finally, FreeCAD or K-Layout will ex export Gerber files for you to, to have a board made. So now I'm gonna actually show you some software just so you have an idea of what all this stuff looks like other than just a, just a list. So here's my heart-shaped antenna. And this is FreeCAD, 0.19 version. And you see, you can, you can rotate this in three dimensions. You can make a part. It, you, if you're not familiar with FreeCAD, it uses constraints to draw a sketch. You set the constraints, the radius, the distance, the horizontal, vertical, parallel, things like that. So here's my heart shape. So then I'm gonna to go to the next software in my workflow and that is K-Layout. It's down here, open up and there we go. 
So I made it, I made it stepped just, to, just so it has fewer vertices. It's a little easier to deal with. You don't have to do that. And KL layout also allows you to draw. You can create a box or a polygon. If you don't want to work with FreeCAD, you can draw or you can edit. Here, I'll just draw a triangle. Why not? There, now I added a triangle to my, to my antenna. That's a terrible idea, but I did it. So then once I've done K layout, exported that, I go into Meep. I've got a, I've got a conda environment, an anaconda that I activate. I just copy and paste stuff in because I'm lazy and I like to see what, see what comes out. It's more fun than just running a .py file. But here you go. You set up some geometries and I've got links to all of these software at the end and I'm happy to, happy to talk more with you in the, in the channel about how this works. This isn't really a Meep tutorial. This is the most complicated piece of software, I would say. So import, get your layers, set your geometry, set your continuous source, set up a simulation, run it. There's a file name, output the electric field. And, and that's, that's pretty straightforward. And I'm going to show, uh, show some of the output. Here's a 3D. I, I outputted a, a VTK file from Meep. And I'm going to do this nice and slowly so you can sort of watch it. But you can see. see and you can see that this is actually a three-dimensional object. You can see there's a little bit of a height. And that is the thickness of the metal. So this is the antenna itself, which is metal. And there we go. Let's see if this is anything any good. And I'm clicking on a different view and oh, I changed the parameters, so I'm not going to worry about that. I won't make you sit through sit through that. This is a powerful viewing program. It shows a lot. And so now I'm going to go back to the slides, show you a few more things, and that'll be good. Here we are. Whoops. Come on. OK, this is the workflow. So here's what the rectangular patch looked like in Paraview. Waiting for the slides to catch up. Sorry about that. A little bit of a delay. And here is the electric field propagating through, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my mouse back, through the heart-shaped antenna. It starts at the left where the source is in this left-hand picture. Then in the center picture, you can see the electric field is propagating down the line where the microstrip is. And then in the right-hand picture, you can see that it's underneath the heart. So this is a slice of the simulation in the center of the, the PCB, the dielectric material underneath the heart antenna. Okay. Back to the slideshow so you can see it a little bit better. And then I made a GIF. I'll let this run a couple of times. So this is, is an animation of what's happening. And I'll just let this catch up real quickly. OK, there we go. And then finally, I'm going to talk about how I would test these antennas once I make the boards and, and get them back. So you would get a, an SMA connector, I would say, these frequencies from, from somewhere like mini circuits. They're, they're pretty common. And I have a handheld spectrum analyzer from RF Explorer. It's a, a neat little guy. And so this one has two, two antennas. The longer antenna is for low frequencies, and the short antenna is for higher frequencies in the, in the gigahertz range. So what you would do is you would take this little guy, and you would take off the, the shorter antenna, just unscrew it, and then you would just quickly put, the, put your, your antenna on, whether it's your rectangular patch or your heart-shaped antenna. And then 
just kind of put the, the part of the board with the antenna on it facing your router and, and you can see what the spectrum looks like. You can see where the, where the frequency, where it's picking up, which frequency and which peak frequency is it's sort of ignoring. And then you can switch over to the, the Wi-Fi analysis view, which tells you which channel it's seeing. And it does have some software for, I think, Windows that you can look at in more detail. It's, it's kind of interesting. And that way you can compare your, your cute antenna with a standard antenna. And you can tilt your antenna around and figure out which directions are best, which give you the best uh, results and which, uh, which are, are lower, lower gain. And, and the rest of these are just links. There's a link to the software resources I've, I've mentioned. And if you're interested in, in antennas or RF engineering, here are a couple of, of really good resources to get you started. Microwaves 101 has everything from antennas to waveguides to how everything works. And antenna theory is, as you might guess, focused on antennas. Um, here is my contact information. I will post the some of the code and the results on, on GitHub once I have everything kind of packaged neatly. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I love talking about this stuff. It's sort of the, the area of that I ended up working in and and just being passionate about. So I guess I want to conclude by saying I'd like to encourage everyone here to, to follow your interests and, and follow your passions. Um, make your own path. Do what do what interests you and intrigues you the most and, and have fun. Thank you. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Um, this is really great. I really enjoy it also the live demo aspect of antenna design. Um, maybe one just short question, which sure. is for people who want to get into this and are experimenting with simulating and then testing, um, mm -hmm. can you offer any advice or encouragement or, or uh, things that they should look out for when they're first getting started with going from what the numbers say should happen versus what actually happens with the PCB? Mm -hmm. um, iterating with your simulation the, the one thing I didn't talk about here that, that is my next step in simulation is to do a reflection simulation. And I'm gonna click back to one of my slides. Let me share my screen again real quick to answer your question, allow. Okay, share. And I'm gonna go back to, to this image. So, so you can see my mouse, I think, or you will in a second. So as the, as the, the wave from the source travels down the microstrip line, it gets here to the patch antenna, and some of it reflects. It's moving for me, but I get it, I think. Okay, it will in a second. There's, there's a little bit of a lag I'm seeing on the YouTube. It, it takes a second for it to go to the YouTube, but I am seeing you in StreamYard. Okay. <laughs> maybe okay. it doesn't share your mouse. But anyway. So, so some of the energy reflects off the, the patch and goes back towards the source. And you can set a plane in MEEP to measure that reflected energy. And you can take what the source is, subtract the energy that comes back, and it will give you a reflection curve, or in the RF parlance, S11. S is for a scattering matrix. 11 means from port one back around to port one. And so you're going to get a dip at the frequency that your antenna is radiating best because it's not reflecting much it's radiating at that frequency. And that will help you tweak where your center frequency is. Cool. So I will cool. we'll post some yeah, stuff on that tips. when I get it done, but <laughs> that, that's what I would do next. Well, awesome. Um, there are people in the Discord clamoring for you to collaborate with Anu on an antenna design. So uh, <laughs> maybe if that's Wonderful. something uh, you're yeah. up for, chat about it in there. Yes, um, thank you also for being the last short talk of our conference today.